Scientists have always looked up to the sky with hope. With each new discovery that's made, it helps us to understand our place in the universe and whether we are part of something much bigger. With the billions of galaxies and over 700 quintillion planets that reside within the universe, the chance of there being life outside of Earth seems very high. The planets that we are looking to are Mars and Venus, along with moons such as Enceladus and Europa, which orbit Jupiter and Saturn. Going back, NASA's then chief scientist Ellen Stofan claimed that by 2025, scientists will most likely discover prominent signs of life somewhere in the universe, saying that all of the data that NASA have gathered point towards us making a big discovery sometime in the near future. This announcement was made while she was speaking at a panel discussion, which heavily focused on NASA's search for habitable worlds. John Grunsfeld, who's a physicist and astronaut, carried on with the following. I think we're one generation away in our solar system, whether it's on an icy moon or on Mars, and one generation away on a planet around a nearby star. End quote. Europa has volcanoes on the floor of its subsurface ocean. Although Jupiter's icy moon Europa might not look like much on the surface, it is a source of great interest to astronomers studying space in general, as well as the potential for life outside of Earth. One of the prevailing reasons for this interest is the fact that Europa's unique surface is the smoothest surface of any known object in the solar system and, with a salty subsurface ocean beneath, many believe it could also potentially harbour some form of life within its waters. Because of this, astronomers have carefully studied all elements of the unique planet in detail so that they could gather a better understanding of what the contents likely look like and one of the newest of these revelations is quite interesting. Recently published study results demonstrated, through 3D modeling, the most detailed study of the internal heating system and its effects on the icy surface that has been completed to date. The study showed how the core of the moon may produce enough heat to partially melt the rocky inner layer just enough to create subsurface volcanoes, further validating decades-long speculation regarding volcanic activity on Europa. Whereas other moons, such as Jupiter's neighbouring moon Io, are highly volcanic with obvious activity, Europa's volcanoes, if they exist at all, have been much harder to pin down until now. The study details in great depth the flow of heat through the rocky area of the inner surface, as well as how the pull of Jupiter's gravity, which is much weaker on Europa than Io, likely helps to stoke these fires on the sea floor below the ocean especially in areas near the poles where there is more heat generated. The team proposed that this volcanic activity has been continuing through the lifespan of Europa and will likely continue to do so, albeit in a much weaker capacity, as the interior cools throughout the course of time. In Europa's case, a long-maintained volcanic sea floor slowly warming and circulating the ocean across the surface astronomically increases the opportunity for the development of extraterrestrial life forms. One of the researchers who published the study, Dr. Behunkova, said that Europa is one of the rare planetary bodies that might have maintained volcanic activity over billions of years, and possibly the only one beyond Earth that has large water reservoirs and a long-lived source of energy. This certainly creates exciting possibilities for researchers attempting to uncover the mysteries of space, especially as they continue in the quest for extraterrestrial life. Hubble monitors weird dark vortex on Neptune. In 2018, scientists observed a strange phenomenon near Neptune using the NASA ESA Hubble Space Telescope. It turned out to be a giant dark storm, measuring at 7,400 kilometers in diameter, hovering over the northern hemisphere of Neptune. Since then, the storm's movements have been tracked and analyzed, and for a while it followed expected paths drifting south towards Neptune's equator at the start of 2020. At this point, scientists expected the vortex to vanish from sight. However, by August of 2020, they were shocked to find the vortex doubling back up north to where it had originated. The behavior is peculiar, as scientists have studied Neptune's vortexes and storms before, and therefore should be able to predict their movements with a degree of confidence. We know a lot about them. They are high-pressure systems which can form at any latitudes and then typically migrate to the equator. They stay intact for so long as they journey down the planet due to the strong Coriolis force exerted in the northern hemisphere of Neptune. However, 
the Coriolis force weakens considerably the closer one gets to the equator, and therefore, once a storm hits this point, the external forces are no longer enough to keep it held together, and they disintegrate. It turns out the observed storm of 2018 to 2020 did not venture close enough to the equator to lose the strength of the Coriolis force, and thus stayed intact despite guesses made by simulated models. About the same time that this mysterious path change happened, a smaller vortex appeared near the original one, and then proceeded to disappear. It emerged from the side of the larger storm closest to the equator, which fits theories of the disruptive nature of the equatorial zone. Although, while a disruption to the larger vortex makes sense scientifically, the construction of a new one does not give it being located in an area severely lacking in Coriolis force. Explanations for the new smaller vortex are still disputed, with best theories suggesting that the larger vortex shed a piece of itself to redirect its path away from the equator. Given that this theory neatly explains two strange discoveries, it seems like a nice answer to things we otherwise cannot explain. And yet, we do not know for sure why things happen as they do, both in space, thousands of years ago, or in the deepest layer of the Earth. There is so much more to learn and discover about everything, and we are making headway every day. Weird nearby gamma-ray burst defies expectations It seems that every time researchers think that they have nailed down how one aspect of space functions, an anomaly shows up and forces them to rethink everything that they thought they knew. Most recently, scientists were able to have front row seats to an incredible gamma-ray burst captured by NASA's space observatories Fermi and Swift and originating from the area of space near the Eridanus constellation in the Southern Hemisphere, a rather close 1 billion light-years away. The burst and its subsequent afterglow took place over several days, as scientists watched and carefully recorded the progress, eager to learn more about how gamma-ray bursts form and what happens in their wake. The only problem was that the burst did not seem to follow the typical rules that had been loosely laid down by previous occurrences. Due to the proximity of the spectacle, scientists observing from Earth were able to record much higher energy photons than are typically able to be observed in these instances, as the higher energy photons from farther away usually never reach Earth because they are instead absorbed in collisions with background light. Using mobilized gamma-ray telescopes to observe the 13-hour-long explosion, the research team was able to analyze these unusually high levels of photons, which revealed something very intriguing. Surprisingly, the analysis of the radiation emitted from the recent gamma-ray burst revealed a radiation pattern that was very similar to that of X-rays, a fact that was both shocking and one of the last things that astronomers would have expected, as the two instances are believed to be caused by entirely different phenomena and to cause two different types of radiation. Because they are so mysterious, nobody is quite sure exactly how gamma-ray bursts are formed. Some think that they are caused when massive stars up to 10 times the size of the Sun explode, leaving behind equally mysterious black holes in their wake. Still, others hypothesize that they are generated through the collision of two neutron stars, which also has been shown to cause a black hole. The recent analysis of the properties of these high-powered gamma rays has forced researchers to consider whether they might have been wrong about the provenance of these mysterious bursts altogether, and many researchers have gone back to the drawing board to attempt to discover why such different phenomena as gamma rays and X-rays would have such similar signatures. One of the reasons why research in this area is so limited and full of guesswork is due to the fact that only four gamma ray bursts have been able to be captured from Earth leaving astronomers to attempt to discern patterns from a rather small dataset. Luckily, scientists are hopeful that recent advances in space viewing technology and instruments will assist in closing this gap, providing more observational data to support current hypotheses and help to solve the mystery of gamma-ray bursts once and for all. NASA spacecraft just saw the North Pole of Europa Jupiter has 79 moons, putting Earth's measly one to shame. And with so many moons, it is unsurprising that there is a great deal we do not yet know about them. NASA are on it, though, with their spacecraft Juno being sent to orbit Jupiter 
plenty of insights are being frequently sent back to us here on Earth. The most recent of which tells us a little more about Europa, Jupiter's icy moon. Up until now, we have not seen all of Europa, with no photos being taken from a distance and no sightings of the North Pole region. This camera-shy moon has finally been captured by Juno, and the results are more exciting than we had guessed. Europa's icy North Pole seems to have water vapor that looks as though it is rising out of the moon in plumes, suggesting the oceans of this planet could have conditions that could be home to life. Looking for signs of life in space, especially within our own solar system, is a thrilling aspect of astronomical research. Up until now, a great deal of research in our own solar system has looked at how the conditions on Mars could have once supported life, though now it seems Europa could be a new contender. Admittedly, the photo quality from Juno is poor in the images received so far, with a distance of 50,000 miles between the spacecraft and the moon. The resolution is not spectacular. However, next year, Juno is due to travel just a few hundred miles above the same spot of Europa, giving us a great opportunity to look forward to just on the horizon. Scott Bolton, the Juno Principal Investigator and Director of the Space Science and Engineering Division of the Southwest Research Institute, described this as a tantalizing example and a taste of what's to come. The advancements we can see just around the corner continue to be just as thrilling as ever. Hopefully more questions and information will be coming our way shortly. Whether we find one more piece of information in a wider piece of research, or we are uncovering some answers to big questions, science is fascinating and the research is never complete. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.